Anyway, thanks for coming again. Uh, um, this talk is, is going to be introducing the various concepts for uh, about uh, coordinate systems projecting and transforming. We're not going to be uh, showing any code. We're going to be pretty much dealing with all the different um, concepts. My name is Rob Jurgens. This is Boyan Sodrich. Uh, we're both uh, members of the uh, projection engine team at Esri. And uh, here we go. We're going to start with uh, a typical problem, which Boyan will uh, discuss. So let's take a look here in ArcMap. Uh, in ArcMap, I have an orthophoto image of a Palm Springs area. <clears throat> And I would like to map a Palm Springs uh, city border. So I add the Palm Springs, basically polygon of Palm Springs area. And if I zoom into this area, polygon shows up somewhere else. So basically the data does not line up. If I take a look on the full extent, I see that my Palm Springs polygon shows up somewhere in the middle of the um, Pacific Ocean and it doesn't show up in the right area. So it's very apparent that something is wrong with coordinate system or something is set up wrong. Um, to better understand what is going on exactly, let's first take a look what coordinate system actually are and how do we define them. So back to you, Rob. Okay. <clears throat> oh, wrong way. Okay, we're going to be discussing basically four different issues here. We're, we're, we're going to be talking about horizontal coordinate systems, vertical coordinate systems, projections, and transformations. So let's start with horizontal coordinate systems. So <clears throat> what exactly is a coordinate system? <clears throat> it's a agreed upon way of describing data such as distance, location, or direction. For instance, we could say, how far is it from San Francisco to Los Angeles? Well, we could say it's so many miles, so many kilometers, a different number of kilometers, yards. So which one is correct? Well, it all depends on what your coordinate system is. Similarly, if we want to look at a particular coordinate for uh, an area, <clears throat> like Los Angeles, well, we have the you know we have the, the small numbers 118, 34, and then we have very large numbers. Uh, and again, which which of these is correct? It all depends on your coordinate system. Similarly, where's the North Pole? Is it on the right? Is it on the top? Is it on the bottom? Is it not even necessarily on the map at all? Again, it all depends on what your coordinate system is. So, <clears throat> there are two kinds of horizontal coordinate systems. There's geographic and projected. Okay, the geographic coordinate system is based on the globe. Okay, coordinates are given in latitude and longitude, which is usually degrees. It doesn't have to be, it could be something else but usually degrees, where the latitude is measured up and down from the equator and the longitude is measured from some arbitrary zero point that we pick, called the prime meridian. Now, if, if you're really attentive here, you will notice that this line P, we're looking at this point P on the surface, and you'll notice that the line does not go through the center. It would go through the center if we had a if the globe was a perfect sphere. But if it's an ellipsoid, then it's going to just uh, miss the center, because what we're actually look, looking at is is a point that is per, perpendicular to the surface of the Earth, not necessarily the way that it goes to the center of the Earth. So, in in a, this is the way we tend to. Think think of seeing a geographic coordinate system in ArcMap. This isn't really a projection. We're actually showing it flat, but um, when, we, when we're showing geographic coordinate systems in ArcMap, we're just basically just going from minus 180 to plus 180 
and minus 90 to plus 90, and just kind of just showing the degree values there. Now, in a projected coordinate system, now we're actually dealing with a flat map. And, uh, and we're dealing with x, y values on a, uh, you know, on a, a Cartesian grid. And these x, y values are going to be like yards, meters, miles, something like that, a linear uh, measurement as opposed to the angular measurements. OK. So a horizontal coordinate system consists of, first of all, again, the geographic coordinate system. Then a geographic coordinate system contains the prime meridian, which is where we are measuring our zero uh, longitude from. It has an angular unit. Usually, you will see this as degrees. Uh, the French tend to use grads. Um, you can use, there are other values. And there's a datum, which we'll talk about later. And the, the biggest thing about the datum is it describes, it contains the spheroid, which, can, which describes the shape that we are dealing with, the size of, of the Earth, and also uh, the shape that we are dealing with. Now, when we go to a projected coordinate system, <clears throat> a projected coordinate system is always based on a particular geographic coordinate system. The, the projected coordinate system contains a projection, which is the mathematical algorithm used in converting between the lat long values and the xy values. And then we have there's always various parameters which are specific to the mathematical algorithm, the projection that we're using. And then again, what, what is our linear unit involved here? So there are two ways that we can specify a coordinate system in, in, in ArcMap, a well-known ID or a well-known text. OK, a well-known ID is any predefined coordinate system will have an ID assigned to it. We have in our system right now uh, something on the order of 6,700 predefined coordinate systems, um, predefined projected coordinate systems, and somewhere around 800 predefined geographic coordinate systems. So as we can see, there's a lot more projected coordinate systems than geographic coordinate systems. So we can have a lot of projected coordinate systems, which are all based on the same geographic coordinate system. <coughs> if the, <coughs> if, uh, so they all are given a WKID, a well-known ID. And as you can see in the uh, picture there, uh, we'll, we, we will show you what that ID is when you pick it. <clears throat> if the ID is less than or equal to 32,767, um, then this ID is assigned by the EPSG, which is the European Petroleum Survey Group, also known as OGP, or Oil and Gas Producers. Um, they're, uh, so if it's under that, it's, it's assigned by them, if it's greater than 32,767, then it has been assigned by us. So our IDs and their IDs do not clash at all. Now, IDs can change. Now, why would this happen? Well, in the EPSG world, quite often what will happen is they will, they will add a coordinate system to their database and they'll assign it an ID, and then it'll turn out that they made a mistake. So what they'll do is they'll deprecate that number and then put in the correct values under a different number. Um, for us, what quite ha often happens is some agency will come to us and say, can you add this coordinate system to your, to your database? And we'll say, fine, and we add it, and then we assign it an ESRI ID number. And then later on, EPSG then adds it to their database, and then they give it their number. So now we have two different numbers, our number and their number. So we more or less kind of defer to their number, 
Although in, in all those cases, if you're using our software, we will respond to either ID will work. Okay, the other way to do it is uh, defining it using a text string. And the well-known text is, uh, is what it's called because it, the, the structure of the syntax of this string is well-known. This is the only way that you can create a custom coordinate system is by using a, a well-known no, no, text. So here's the well-known text for a geographic coordinate system. As you can see, there's a name associated with the coordinate system. It contains a datum, which also has a name, and which contains a spheroid, which also has a name, and then two numbers, the first number being the, the uh, size, the axis, the, the major axis. It's always in meters. And then the second number is the inverse of the flattening. So this one, for instance, is saying that that we're uh, 1 298 flattened. Uh, and then we have a, the prime meridian, which also has a name, and then our, our unit value. You might look at that and say, what is that crazy number after the degrees? Uh, that's the conversion to radians. So that's, that's what that number represents. So if we want to look at the WKT for a projected coordinate system, Again, it has the complete geographic coordinate system contained in it. And then we also add the projected coordinate system has a name. And then we see uh, the projection, which in this case is transverse Mercator. So again, that, that's the name of the algorithm that is used. Uh, a lot of people tend to use the word projection when they're really talking about a coordinate system. So, it's always good to uh, remember that a projection is actually the name of the algorithm. And then we have parameters and a unit. Okay, <clears throat> moving on to vertical coordinate systems. <clears throat> um, again, we have these questions like, for instance, how high is Mount Everest? Well, is it 8,800 meters, 29,000 feet? Uh, different, you know, uh, kilometers. And again, what's the answer? We all know it depends on the coordinate system. So what is a vertical coordinate system telling us? First of all, right now in our, in our software, we only support vertical coordinate systems for vector data. Hopefully we will get it moved on to raster data, but for right now it's for vector data only. And what a vertical coordinate system is doing is, is defining the origin that you are measuring height from. Now, sometimes you measure height above a given line and sometimes below a given line, depending on typically, are you dealing with heights or are you dealing with depths? So <clears throat> what are we looking at here when we're dealing with a vertical coordinate system? So we can see here, we have a, uh, uh, the blue circle here is the, is the theoretical mathematical ellipsoid uh, that we use as the basis of our math. But, if, but the surface of the Earth is actually doesn't follow that. It's bumpy. It sticks up. It sticks down. Uh, so we define a new model, which is a gravity-related model. The, the gravity-related model is this yellow thing. And this is the surface of equal potential gravity. Okay, So this is not a mathematical thing. This, is, this has to be measured, measured by satellites like the Gochi or GravD or the various satellites actually measure the gravitational potential over the Earth. So when we are measuring heights, sometimes we measure height from the ellipsoid, that's a geometric model, and sometimes we are measuring from the geoid, which is the gravity-related model. Okay, so 
what, what is happening here. Um, we can see the blue line is our ellipsoid, our theoretical mathematical ellipsoid. And then the, this green line is our geoid. And then we have the undulation, which is at any particular place, the difference between the two. So, what, so for instance, <clears throat> if you're using a GPS uh, to figure out what your position is, it's going to give you that position relative to the ellipsoid. But if you're like uh, measuring, for instance, the height of a mountain, uh, those measurements are done by measuring the gravi gravity at the top of the mountain, and, that, and then they, they, they figure out how high it is. So it's measuring from the geoid, not from the ellipsoid. So for instance, if you have a value that is the top of a mountain, which has now been measured using the gravity, but now you want to relate that to a GPS value, which is being measured off the ellipsoid, then we have to account for that difference. And that's what the vertical coordinate, you know, vertical transformation is doing. You're switching between these two, usually. So here's an example of what the Earth looks like. The, the white circle is the theoretical ellipsoid. This is actually, what, 250,000 times? You know, something like that, yeah. Something like that, you know. It's the Earth is really that bad. But, uh, but this, is, this is the way the, the, the gravi gravitational surface of the Earth looks. Because these things change all the time. Because, you know, you can be next to a mountain, right? And, it, and that's going to pull the, gra it's gonna pull the gravity because of the mass of the mountain. So gravitational lines are not straight. It all depends on where you are. Okay, so what makes up a vertical coordinate system? Okay, it has either a datum or a vertical datum. It'll have a datum if it is based on measuring from the ellipsoid, and it will have a vertical datum if it is based on measuring from the geoid. And then we have two parameters, vertical shift, which is just an arbitrary value that you can specify to be added to everything, and uh, the direction. The direction is simply plus one or minus one. And what you're saying is, are my values, are they positive going up, which means I'm typically measuring height, or are they measuring down, which means you're typically measuring depth. And then again, we have a linear unit associated with it. So, <clears throat> did I go the wrong way? No, no this is no. That's no. right. Yeah. Okay. So here we 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 can see uh, we have the uh, again our theoretical ellipsoid. We have our geoid. We have the uh, <clears throat> the small h is the ellipsoidal height, and the capital H is showing us the geoid height. And so uh, quite often, if you're looking at, at literature, uh, they use, this is a very common notation. The, the lowercase h is, is, uh, means it's, it's ellipsoidal based, and the uppercase h means it's geoidal based. Uh, referencing orthometric height here, which is one of, one of the geoidal measurements. Okay. So the direction, again, is if you're measuring depths, we're typically going to be, be, be measuring down. Um, so, so you want to say a positive value. No, no one says I'm 100 feet under the, you know, they don't say I'm minus 100 feet below sea level. They just say I'm 100 feet below sea level, and you assume that they're giving you a depth value. And again, here's the well-known no, known text. For a vertical coordinate system, and we and we do have predefined uh, vertical coordinate systems, uh, so there will be well-known well IDs associated with them. Also, um, right now we have 295 different vertical coordinate systems defined in our software. Uh, okay. 
Let's move on to projections. Now we now we, we we got our coordinate systems. What do we do with them? So what is the what is happening when we do a projection? What we're doing is we are converting again between the round globe, which is which has values specified in degrees or some angular measurement, and we are going to a flat map with linear measurements, x, y measurements. Okay, and here's a picture that Boyan put together of some of our various projections that we have. Um, we currently, in our software, we support 94 different projections. And here's a list of them. Okay, now, why do we have so many different projections? Well, remember you're sad. Shape, area, direction, and distance. Because what is happening here is if, if you look at the uh, very cool picture there, you can't take a round surface and make it perfectly flat without something being distorted. There will always be distortion in a map. And the shape, area, direction, distance are the four different things which can be distorted. So a particular projection will typically preserve one or more of those and let other ones distort. So it all depends on what you want to do with this projection. Okay. Um, for instance, let, let's look at this Mercator projection, the most famous projection of all, right? Especially, um, <clears throat> everyone's seen this. So here, here we're looking at three different land masses, South America, Antarctica, and Greenland. And from the looks of this, it's quite obvious that uh, Antarctica is, is by far the largest and then Greenland and then South America is, the, uh, is really teeny. But in actuality, uh, South America is much larger. It's like almost seven times as large as, as Greenland. And this is because of the distortion of this map. This map is not preserving uh, area. In fact, we, we can see on the left here this is how both Greenland and Africa are shown on a Mercator projection, and they look pretty much the same size. But on the right, in actuality, that's the real size difference. So if you're, you would not use then a Mercator projection if you want to preserve area. So for instance, if you're measuring rainfall or crops or who knows what, uh, you would want to preserve area, and you can let other things be distorted. If you're flying a plane, you might prefer to, uh, to have distance or direction preserved. And area really doesn't matter. So it re what is happening is, what do you want to use the map for? And that's going to determine what projection you use. Here's our four things, shape, area, direction, and distance. So, and again, it depends on what you are using or what you, want to, what you are using the map for. So here's an example of a projection that preserves shape, the stereographic projection. So uh, uh, it looks kind of strange, but the shapes of all the various objects on this map are more or less true shapes. Now again, of course, <clears throat> whenever we say a map preserves something, it really preserves it really well at the center of the map. And then the more you get towards the edges of the map, um, you will see more distortion than you do at the center. So here's a, here's a uh, area preserving, Albers equal area. So this, you can look on the on the left, and you can see uh, Australia. It doesn't even look like Australia at all. We have totally not preserved any kind of shape here, but we are preserving area. And as you can see, did you don't jump yeah. down? Thank you. <laughs> I keep forgetting. 
you can see the rel relative sizes of America, of the United States, and, and Australia. And then here, here is one which preserves direction and distance. So again, it all depends on what you want to use the map for. So what is actually happening when we do uh, a projection? <clears throat> In this case, what we want to do is we want to move from one projected coordinate system, a PCS, to another projected coordinate system. Uh, and both of these coordinate systems are based on the same geographic coordinate system. So in this case, what we do in our software is we first we unproject so we're going from the one projected back down to the geographic, and then we are going back up to the other one. We never go straight across. You always go down to the geographic and then back up. Now, if we have two different projected coordinate systems that are based on different geographic coordinate systems, then again, we do the unproject, converting from the XY back to the lat long, then we do a transformation, which takes us <clears throat> to the other geographic coordinate system, and then we do a reproject back up again. <clears throat> so <clears throat> remember this. So projecting or unprojecting means you're going between a geographic coordinate system and a projected coordinate system. If you're doing a transformation, you're going between two different geographic coordinate systems. So let's look at what is this transformation and why is it important? OK, if we look here, the, our yellow line here is the, again, our theoretical ellipsoid, which doesn't necessarily match the surface of the Earth. Uh, so here we, we have some data up in the upper left there. So like, for instance, imagine that you have data in Denver, OK, which is a mile high. So you're a mile above this theoretical ellipsoid that we are dealing with. OK, so what happens is, is that the ellipsoid that we have here doesn't really match the surface of the Earth at that location. So what we want to do is pick a different ellipsoid, which fits the surface of the Earth at that place. OK, so this is a localized phenomenon. You're dealing with, at this location on the Earth, this particular ellipsoid works better than the other one. <clears throat> so in this case, for instance, we're looking at the theoretical WGS84, and now we have a local datum using NAD27. So the, the datum transformation is what we are doing is we are moving the data from one of these ellipsoids to the other one. And this can involve a shift. It can involve a rotation. It can involve a, a shift in direction. Okay. <clears throat> so let's look at what this means to us. Here we have <clears throat> a raster that is in ED50, uh, European datum 1950, and now someone has drawn a, you know, a street on it using WGS84, and as you can see, this blue line does not match at all. But if we apply the transformation, boom, now it lines up. So, <clears throat> excuse me, a geographic transformation or a datum transformation typically is going to involve moving your data usually not more than, say, 100 meters. It's a, it's a small shift. So it's important when you're dealing with close-up maps. If you're looking at a world map, for instance, you're not going to see 100 meters. It's just not going to be there. But the, but the more you zoom in, the more you need to have this to be able to have things line up. So. We have two kinds of transformations, geographic you know, uh, transformations and vertical transformations. So again, the, 
the, the geographic or horizontal ones, there's shifting between the two GCSs, and then we may have to do a vertical transformation, which is shifting between some ellipsoidal view and some geoidal view that we want to look at. So we have to do both sometimes. So in a geographic coordinate system, they are, def you know, a particular transformation is defined for going from one to another. It's, they're always defined as going in a particular direction. So in this, for instance, in this one, we're going from NAD 27 to WGS 84. Okay, they are all reversible. We can go back. You know, everything in our software is is uh, reversible, but they are defined as going in one direction or the other. So. <clears throat> Another problem that comes up is there may be a lot of different transformations for a particular area. For instance, here we're going from NAD 27, which is North America datum, 1927, and we're going to WGS 84, which is, <clears throat> which is uh, defined for the entire world, whereas the NAD is defined for North America. So we can see on the right, we have uh, 33 different transformations that can be, you know, that, that go between these two, okay? But as you can see from the boxes, again, they are all applicable to a particular area. So what you want to do is, depending on what your data is, where it is, that's the box you're going to pick to use. And again, the, the smaller the box, the more accurate it's going to be, but you want to be able to, so what you want to do is find the smallest enclosing box that, that includes all of your data. And that's going to be probably the best transformation for you to use. Now, we don't expect you to do this. You know, it's hard enough for us to figure out how to do it. So what we do is we give you these lists. Here we're we're showing how it looks in pro, how it looks in desktop, and how it looks in server. <clears throat> so you're giving us the, uh, the two coordinate systems. The underlying software is also giving us the envelope of the data that, is, that, that you have put on your map or on your layer. <clears throat> and then we come up with this list of all possible transformations that will work. <clears throat> And this list is sorted into what we think is best to what we think is worst. So unless you know something or someone has told you we should be using this transformation, um, always just take the top one in the list. It's what we have determined is going to be the most applicable, the best transformation for your data, where it's located, um, et cetera. Now again, for verticals, we do, we do the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> here we're, we're going from the ellipsoidal height, which is uh, what NAD83 is doing. Is that NAD83? Yeah. yeah. And now we're, we're going to an orthometric height, which is, again, based on the geoid as opposed to based on the ellipsoid. And so again, we have the... Uh, the uh, uh, dialog box there, which, which can give you a list. The, you won't see quite as many vertical choices as we have for the horizontal curve. There are just not that many yet. <clears throat> so, what is happening when we're doing a vertical transformation now? We are going from one source vertical coordinate system to another vertical coordinate system. So, um, <clears throat> so the, the transformation, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you, you specify the two coordinate systems, the from and the to, and then you, you may have to specify what is the geographic coordinate system that you're based on. And then, uh, uh, we can also have various other parameters. The reason for having to know 
the geographic information is because with vertical, as, as we discussed, most vertical uh, data is not mathematical. It's all measured stuff. So we're dealing with grid files which contain data. And, the, uh, and then the, the uh, grid files, <clears throat> we have to know where on the grid to look up where your data is. So then we have to have a geographic coordinate system associated with the transformation. If your transformation was simply saying, uh, I'm at mean sea level and I want to go move up to, uh, I don't know, highest tidal level or something like that, so you're adding a fixed five feet to everything, then you don't need to know anything. But if you're doing a grid lookup, you have to have that information. So here's our various methods. We have the uh, geoid models, EGM, uh, geoid, and vertcon. These all require the use of grid files, <clears throat> whereas the vertical offset, vertical offset, and slope do not require grid files. They're just doing calculations. Now, <clears throat> Uh, these grid files, especially for vertical, are, can be very large. The EGM 2008, one, by one, one minute by one minute, that one file is 900 meg large. It's, it's huge. So, <clears throat> of course, I didn't really mention it, but um, even in doing geographic or, or horizontal transformations, quite often there are grid files associated with them. Uh, most of the grid files for the horizontal transformations are just part of the base package. If you install ArcMap or if you install ArcPro, you, you, you get these files. But if you want to do vertical work, you have to uh, separately, you have to download the uh, data package, which contains the vertical uh, coordinates, you know, uh, the, the uh, vertical grid files. This is called the uh, ArcGIS or ArcGIS Pro coordinate systems data. And that's the name of the package. So you have to install that package. And it contains, again, the, the VertCon, the Geoid, and the EGM files for doing vertical. Also, it contains a few new NTV2 files, and it contains the Geocon files. <clears throat> uh, Geocon is, is a new set of, of uh, transformation grid files that were, that were uh, released to deal with the uh, 2011 realization, um, which we haven't discussed. Uh, even when we're dealing with a geographic coordinate system, like NAD83, for instance, okay? So it was originally defined in 1983. That's why they call it NAD83. But then they periodically, as they remeasure, they come up with what they call new realizations of the, of the same geographic coordinate system. So you'll see that there's like NAD83, there's NAD 83 Harn, there's NAD 83 2007, and now there's NAD 83 2011. Um, they're all assuming the same geographic coordinate system, but they're measured better. And so what, what that means is if you use, you know, as they measure it better, then they can also tweak and come up with better transformation parameters to do a better job of doing the, the transformation. And quite often this means coming out with new grid files to do it. And so if you're, if you're dealing with the new 2011 stuff, um, you use the geocon files, which is part of this coordinate system package. Okay, now we totally understand it. We got it all down, right? Coordinate systems, everything. Now, we can go back to our problem. Okay, so let's take a look where we stopped. Um, our orthophoto image, if I go and zoom back to Palm Springs area, and if I take a look at the coordinate system that defines it, I can go to 
to our catalog, take a look at the properties, I can see that the spatial reference that we have here, x, y, or, or horizontal coordinate system is NAT83, UTM, zone 11N. More closely, uh, um, that's horizontal, and vertical coordinate system here is not defined, but we see already a space for it. Uh, once we're going to support raster data uh, as a vertical, you'll be able to specify vertical coordinate system here as well. If we take a look at the spatial reference more closely, uh, we can see that the um, raster image is using a transverse Mercator projection, and it is defined on North American datum, so geographic coordinate system is also NAT83. So let's see now our polygon that it doesn't show in the right place. Um, if I, let's, let's take a look at here, will be better. If we take a look at here, we see that for a polygon we have unspecified coordinate system. So yes, that is the problem. So we have to figure it out what's happening here. If I take a look at the extent of the area, I see that the numbers are very, <coughs> basically not changing much. And it's pretty doubt that like less than a meter we have between all edges of Palm Springs, right? It's kind of hard to believe that. But from the numbers, we can see that it probably goes for geographic coordinates and the values are very nearby where this happens. Because I know this particular data set, because I know where this data is coming from, I know its specification, I know it is using WGS84. So probably for that data, we need a geographic coordinate system WGS84. To um, define a proje projected coordinate system to this data, I'm going to use a defined projection tool, which is in data management. Projections and transformation defined projection. Uh, I'm going to select the data I have, so PS polygon. As soon as and I have to specify the coordinate system. So we know I'm going to use geographic coordinate system for the whole world. We have here WGS84. Once I confirm that, the tool will basically change the projected definition WKT string in the back of the polygon. And as soon as tool finishes, we can see data lines up perfectly on our location where we want to have it. So our river, like orthophoto image is using NAT83 and our uh, polygon is using WGS84. So theoretically means we need a transformation between those two geographic coordinate systems. Um, as Rob mentioned before, probably the system already did its own job, but let's make sure everything is set up correctly. So if I go to the property, data frame properties, I have a button here about transformations. I can take a look. And here we have both geographic coordinate systems, and yes, we're already using something. So if you take a look at the list, here's the list that exists for those two coordinate systems, and yes, we select already the top option for you. So that's set up correctly, and our problem is theoretically solved. Um, so before we finish, let's take a look at uh, another demo. This will be about vertical transformations. This time I'm going to use Arc Pro. Uh, here I have a 3D uh, point layer that has heights as included as well, not just position um, of some certain area. And if you take a look at the properties of this layer, I will go to the source and take a look at spatial reference. We have geographic coordinate system that is defined WGS84. And this time, we also have a vertical coordinate system, which is also WGS84. Which means that probably our data here that we have comes from a GPS or similar navigation uh, source, and it is using ellipsoidal heights. To transform it to some gravity-related heights, um, we have to do the vertical transformation, as Rob taught us before. To do that, I'm going to use a project tool that basically is in the same location. So we go to data management, projections, transformations, and here I have a project tool. If I open the tool, I will select the points that I have. Specif specify the output. I'm going to convert that to um, Earth 
gravity model 2008 so I'm going to use EGM 2008 and I will set up the output coordinate system so when we do any kind of vertical or when we're assigning the coordinate system to um, both so we have to uh, every single time we have to do both we have to assign um, horizontal coordinate system as well as vertical coordinate system otherwise we're not going to do the transmission will not be possible so when we assign the output coordinate system here first I select XY which means horizontal and I'm going to keep the same as it is so I'm going to use WGS84 so this is it and then when I want to apply the vertical coordinate system I go to Z I don't know why we're using Z okay um, and vertical coordinate system here for world is EGM 2008 geoid model so uh, I confirm that nothing happened yet but if I want to perform vertical transformation in projectile either being in arc pro or arc map I have to check it that I want to have I want to perform vertical transformation as soon as I did that I already got the transformation that uh, tool find it for me um, and this is a WGS84 from 2 EGM 2008 so here we see that this is like particular transformation that only works on WGS84 so I need WGS84 as a horizontal base and I'm going from WGS84 for heights to EGM 2008 for heights and I'm using 2 by 2.5 by 2.5 grid file that I basically got it from uh, data, uh, data setup I run the tool it takes this tool should finish very fast okay tool done and while we're waiting the points are showing up already below the original I'm going to change the color so we can see them Check it out. so our oh, wrong. orange points here that we're showing now those are now gravity related points uh, they have a height and if we take a look at the ellipsoidal heights they show up on top the difference here that we see between both set of points is actually geoid height or geoid elevation at that particular area where I did um, vertical transformation um, and yeah that's the difference that happens and uh, because the ellipsoidal height is positive which means that is above the <laughs> mathematical definition of the ellipsoid the orthometric heights or like basically gravity related heights are lower than ellipsoidal heights because we lower them um, for the, the difference okay so that's short lit okay. that here's some resources um, that you can uh, use uh, um, I highly recommend the book Lining Up Data in, in ArcGIS by Margaret Mayer. That's in the bookstore. And there's some technical papers. Um, and finally, don't forget, please fill out the, uh, the uh, survey. That helps us a lot. Um, remember the correct answer is five for everything. Uh, so, um, I'm sure this is not your only session, so you've probably done this before. And uh, that pretty much is it. I'm going to leave this here. Do we have any questions? Yes. Projection of the fly is using basically what we select. So yeah. we are not, we're not, um, projection of the fly basically recognize what kind of coordinate systems you, are, you, uh, you have, um, what kind of extent of the data you have, and for that particular extent, uh, it chooses the best possible projection, uh, transformation that we have in between. So we're not shortcutting anything anymore. You know, there, there are, you know, uh, there can be, you know, if for transformations, um, oh yeah, the, you can do uh, the, again. There are grid-based transformations which are looking up stuff, and then we have algorithmic ones which don't use grid files. And 
Um, but basically, we, we have nothing in terms of trying to figure out, do, we, do I need to be more accurate or not? We always try we to assume be as accurate you, we, as assume, we assume that you want to be as much accurate as possible. Um, the only thing that difference can show up is if you did not install particular grid files from your uh, ArcGI, uh, ArcGIS data setup. Uh, that means that this projection, particular projection, is going to be missing in the whole schema. Uh, and if this projection is much better, uh, transformation is much better, uh, that means that you're not going to be using that because you don't have that on your computer. In case happens that you have it on your computer, then yes, we're going to pick up that one. Any, yes? Yeah. So the geopath files, do they need to be installed separately? Yes. Yes. Uh, if, yes, if you're, if you're d dealing with uh, the new NAD realizations, you have to download the, geo, your, the geocon files using that data package. And then uh, the version of the part map, is that available for 10.4? Or 10.5? Uh, um, geocon was supported uh, in 10.4. Any other questions? Yeah. No? Well, yeah. well, thank you for coming. No, no, he has a question. You had a question? So, um, any kind of data or any kind of engineering you're doing um, ellipsoidal heights are not going to be useful. So any kind of, um, let's say, if you have a surveyor that works on the field, he's going to work uh, and do the leveling. He's going to perform that on the geoid because he cannot orientate himself to the normal of the ellipsoid. Uh, but he's going to be always set to his instruments based on the gravity at that particular position. Um, ellipsoidal, that's, that's the, the biggest issue with GPS and doing the height measurements uh, because GPS can only measure 3D model of the like position and that's why we're getting all these ellipsoidal heights out of it. So most GPS devices already have automatic model that kind of fix the ellipsoidal heights to the automatic heights. So when you got uh, gravity related heights because they're multiple. Um, when you got that out, um, you already have gravity-related heights. So um, I don't remember any good use of ellipsoidal heights. Like I always work with orthometric heights or gravity-related heights in general. So any kind of engineering um, that is done, especially if you have slightly larger scales or stuff like that, you have to do the measurements on the geoid and not on the LO site. I hope that yeah, slightly Actually, actually you have a, any? A, a common usage of uh, ellipsoidal stuff is, is, uh, is uh, tidal datums. If you're dealing with you know, tides, th you know, things like that, you're, uh, those are typically based on the ellipsoid. NAVD88 NAVD is, 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 is based on the geoid. <clears throat> yeah. You have another question? Yeah, Mark. Aha. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is a big mistake that people make. Define projection is when you are saying, I had this data. And you are telling it what the what coordinate system uh, you think it's in. The project tool is when you're actually converting between different coordinate systems. So one is doing an actual conversion of data. The other one is just saying you are just identifying what the coordinate system is. So if you if you take a look like what I used um, in my in my demos, like in the first one, I was using the tool define projection. So in that particular case, I took the data that I already had and I just assigned the, the definition of the coordinate system. I did not change the coordinates. I did not do any change at all. 
I just defined particular data, I just defined what is the spatial reference. In the second demo, on vertical transformations, I used the project tool. Project tool, then basically what happened is you already have something in the coordinate system and from that coordinate system you're changing to another coordinate system, either being uh, geographic, vertical coordinate system, projected coordinate system. Uh, in that, that means that from whatever my input was and whatever my output was, I change, actually change the coordinates. For every single particular point, got the new coordinate sets. And that's the biggest difference with, between the project, uh, project tool and defined project tool. I hope it makes sense. All right, I think okay. we can close this out. Uh, if you, you feel free to come up, but I think we're butting up close to the lunch thing, right? So, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for thank coming. Thank you very much. Fill out, fill out the uh, forms. And if you have any more questions, come on up.